not going to do a run through of the bid and its work this morning because I know some of you will join us in the last one. But if you do have any questions about the bid or you want to have a chat to me, hang on at the end of the meeting and I will stay on the line just in case anyone wants to talk about anything. Um, so if we get underway, do we have the Amelia team? I think we're all with us now. There we go, Joseph. I think I saw Carol pop on the line somewhere, Hillary. Um, so yes, today we have our first guest um, event today. So we've joined by the team of the Amelia Scott. Um, we're just going to do a briefing for town centre businesses just to let you know about the launch and the literary festival um, and about how they sort of plan to engage with businesses. So I'm, I'm assuming there'll be an opportunity if you have any questions um, to ask them, but I will hand over now to the Amelia team um, who can get underway and let you all know about this exciting project, which is imminently opening. So Joe, Hillary, Carol, do you want to say yes. Uh, Hilary, do you want to say anything first? Because I know that you have to leave very, very shortly. I do have to leave. Yes, so apologies. I do have to leave at 10. Um, I'm not really, to be honest, just um, that it's great that Carol and uh, Joe are here to be able to uh, tell us about the uh, imminent opening, and yeah, it's, which is very exciting. So yeah. I'll, I'll okay. hand over to you straight away if that's OK. OK, great. Um, so hi, everybody. And I hate it when people open with an apology, but I am going to open with an apology. My voice is shot. I am on the tail end of COVID. And as any of you know that I've had COVID, um, it, it, it does wipe you out. So this is if I sniff, I really do apologise. Um, and if my voice goes, I've got my wonderful cohort, Joe, alongside of me, who's the sponsorship manager for the Amelia. Um, but I'm going to give you a very quick run through of the Amelia Scott. And um, you will see me grinning because I am so very proud of this building. I joined the Amelia team last October, although I've been with the council for um, four years now. Uh, I'm the producer of um, the events and work across all of the cultural activities of the council. Um, so the Amelia Scott, that uh, it began um, probably nearly 10 years ago now, probably around uh, 2013. And what this new building is going to do is allow us to show our collection, but also tell a story. Um, we had the collection before, of course, and it's quite a large collection, but we were never able to tell a story because we literally didn't have the space. Um, Joe is very kindly going to uh, try and match what I'm saying <laughs> with a PowerPoint that I've not seen. <laughs> yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but this is how closely we work <laughs> and how we fly by the seat of our pants. <clears throat> But I'd also like to say I only got in literally two days ago. So these are all fit pictures that I've rustled up on my phone. So bear with us. <laughs> but uh, but no, seriously, we do value the relationship with businesses. And it's uh, uh, and also it's the first time we've done any kind of talk like this. Um, so the Amelia is the Amelia Scott. Right. Let's get the name. Let's get the name situation out of the way. The building is called the Amelia Scott. And that is named after um, the social reformer who lived in the 19th, 20th century in Tunbridge Wells. She was largely instrumental uh, behind the original library and museum in the town. Um, she was behind uh, the hospital work. She was, a, she was a wonderful social reformer. So we have honored that amazing lady and there is a display about her work in the Amelia. Um, now then. When I refer to the Amelia, I am referring to the museum collection, the museum work, that is a service. So the Amelia service is the museum, art galleries, cultural services, community engagement. But within the Amelia Scott, there are other services. So there's the tourist information, there is adult education, um, there is uh, the gateway services. And I think this is what is so completely unique about this building. What we're doing has not been done anywhere else in the country. And it is why we have received such amazing support from the National Lottery. Um, as you know, it's cost us 20.6 million to put this building together. So when we looked at the demographics, a lot of thought has been put behind this space, which is an intermingled space, as you will see. But um, what, uh, what we thought was the demographics of um, the adult ed, of uh, the libraries, of the museum, 
are all very similar. But what we were missing were the people who were the gateway users. Those people who might be fleeing from domestic violence, they might be homeless, they might be coming for help, they might be coming to bet, register birth, death, marriage. So what we wanted to do was to create a truly unique situation where culture and services sit together, where well-being and statutory services feed off each other. And the lens of the library looks at the lens of the adult ed and the adult ed lens looks at the live the, the, through the lens of temporary education um, exhibition spaces so everything is there to mix together and uh, a lot of thought has been put that when you walk in it feels very big and spacious but it also feels very calm almost every wall is decorated in some way so as you can see here um, on the ground floor, there are two floors. On the ground floor, uh, this will be the noisy space um, because this will this will be the thoroughfare. Um, there's no central desk or anything like that. There's just lots of people helping people around the space. Um, this is where our children's library is. Um, what's your next slide, actually, um, Joe? Because maybe I'll go around what your go on to the okay onto the ground floor so here we go there's the welcome space that i was just dis, uh, just discussing um what we have at the moment is um all of the collections and the library books going in so it is still very much a a, a working space but what you can see on the right hand side there that is the amelia scott exhibition um about the person and um the whole thinking behind the entire building is something called haptic, which is to encourage people to be curious and to look and find out for themselves. And it's very rigueur at the moment in museums to have open spaces, uh, open storerooms rather. And so almost every room you are encouraged to go and have a look and have a go. Now on this ground floor, in, right in the centre, that is the digital space, and that's where we'll be announcing any uh, relationships we have with businesses in the town um, or uh, any events that are going on, because throughout the year we will have a lot of uh, community events and, um, and work with schools. Um, we're, we're hoping that we can reach an increased footfall of um, well, not increase, but a footfall of around 450,000 um, to the town. So this, hopefully, we all know the relationship between culture regeneration and the high street regeneration. We know the importance of that. This is it in action. Um, and so this is us doing uh, everything we can to w make people want to come and work, live um, and learn in the town of Tunbridge Wells. Um, so... Uh, what you can see uh, on the bottom right hand side is a uh, specific buggy park um, and on the left hand side that's uh, a, a lot of people will recognize the rocking horse and the doll's house and Minnie the dog from the old collection um, and so moving on uh, the next slide uh, this is the story of Tunbridge Wells and that large table in the centre will hold um, a model of Tunbridge Wells, but also there are interactive screens either side and you can see how the town looks now and how it looked in the in the past. Um, we're also retelling the story of Tunbridge Wells throughout this building because everybody thinks it's full of um, luxury, you know, the Georgian Regency period. Um, but actually, there's a lot more behind Tunbridge Wells. There's the inventors, there's the makers. Here we're moving into the children's library, one of our favourite spaces because they can explore. There's lots of little cubby holes. Um, this central space, that round space with the world on the rug on the floor, they can lie on the floor and look up. And then on the ceiling, there is going to be stars and um, and all these paintings have all been created by illustrators. And so you, it will take you a long time to see the story of Tunbridge Wells on the walls here, but, but you, 
you will recognize lots of things. Um, and so we're very, well, there'll be storytelling, there'll be lots of events for children to come and see. Uh, and all of this, of course, will be free. Um, and so moving into the next space, we have uh, the cafe, which is being supplied by Fine Grind. The, uh, this again is a lovely space and here you can see the uh, a painter who is his hand painted onto the walls there. Those are Colombian coffee beans. Um, so it could be a lovely place to have your coffee. Um, and we're open seven days a week and the, co the coffee shop will as well. Moving on rapidly. Um, so the look behind the scenes. Uh, this is um, that there is a room called look behind the scenes and I don't know if you've got a photo of that Joe what's the what's the next um, slide I'm trying to move quickly that's all okay so we're in the, the first floor we're, we've moved up onto the first floor now this is the central library area but it's also got that beautiful space at the far end with a beautiful window um, and we will on the ground floor we'll be having activities that people can see in and see us working with people on this floor this is probably the floor where we'll do hires or we'll have events in the evenings um, and uh, the mural on the wall there has got live bits of our collection on the wall but it is reflecting the makers of Tunbridge Wells and then uh, the origins of collection collecting the top left hand room um, this is Joe's favorite room it's got um, very few butterflies there but there will be thousands of butterflies um, as, as many of you will know the origins of collecting started with the Victorians and it was always taxidermy and um, paleontology um, and of course collecting has moved on enormously since those Victorian days but this is a lovely room and it's got um, a, a projection of birds flying around it's based on Kew Gardens these cabinets you can see all of these cabinets always open out you're encouraged all the time to open out and investigate um, just off screen here you can't see this but there is a an interactive thing where you can talk to Professor e Ian Beavis children can ask him questions about bugs and beings and the outdoor and, and climates and things so hugely interactive but Bottom left is the Georgian Spa. Those are the portraits of the Camden family. Um, and in here, you will have an interactive space where you can try, where you can put yourself in um, the clothes of the gorgeous, that gorgeous gown there. Um, or you can dress up as, um, as a, uh, a scullery maid or a farmer, a work farmer. Um, and again, the idea, you know, we've we've got all of the stuff from, from the, the plush side of Georgian so that of history and heritage so that's why people always think Tunbridge Wells is very rich and very plush but actually there are a lot of workers but we don't have those in the collection because of course they'd wear their clothes till they were threadbare um, and then up on the top right you'll notice these gorgeous painting colors as well and I can say this because I had nothing to do with the the choice um, so I'm not um, patting myself on the back at all um, but I do walk around and I did that that deep blue on the left and that amazing sort of yellow ochre kind, kind of room that room is the workroom and that is where you'll find Tunbridge where you'll have um, lots of information about the the people that have made Tunbridge Wells what it is from from a, a work perspective that, that has a huge table in it as well but all of these spaces are really nice to mingle in and they all as I say you know they look at each other so moving on uh yeah, that's that's the end. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's a detail on the left hand side. That's a detail actually of where I li lived. <laughs> but it's how the um, Tunbridge Wells looked uh, on top of how it looks now. The courtyard space um, is just amazing. We've got planters in there that have been made by the men's shed. Um, so again, always trying to find links within the community to bring the community in. This is a space that is to make a difference and it's a space to welcome everybody. Um, that detail on the right, top right, is the detail of the um, 
the rather romantic view of Tunbridge Wells uh, in the past. And then if, as you look out onto the courtyard, you will see some of the art installations. Uh, that there's been seven art installations throughout. Um, so I think you will feel very proud when you walk around this building. OK, moving on. Uh, I think that was the last one. Great. OK, <laughs> uh, so do I have anything to add? So in the I, I mentioned that we have a temporary exhibition space and the first exhibition is a Henry Moore exhibition. And that's now our we have a preview opening on Monday, the 22nd. The building opens to the public on Thursday, the 28th. Um, and the first exhibition that we have in the space is a Henry Moore Threads of Influence exhibition. We have um, the second exhibition coming in in July, which is uh, Cabaret Mechanical Marvels. And then the third exhibition of this year um, is Body Beautiful, which is all about diversity on the catwalk. So again, what we're trying to do through our work is to be as inclusive and um, diverse as possible. So um, that's it in a snapshot. So when we talked about the opening, we wanted to think about how we could really make a, an impact. And I think the fact that having two libraries opening at a time when library services across the country are closing, this is amazing for us, which is how we came up with the idea of a Tunbridge Wells Literary Festival. And this is being supported by you, the businesses, through Sarah Jane um, and BID. And I think Sarah Jane has recognised that this is a really important landmark in our cultural calendar because we're going to make this a, an annual event. Um, what we've tried to do is to obviously focus around the Amelia, but at the same time, we have made sure that the Forum are involved, that Trinity are involved, that um, Tunbridge Wells Hotel down on the Pantiles are involved. So we've really tried to get a spread across the town so that the footfall will, you know, what we're doing is trying to encourage people to just spend more time in the town and around. So the festival is taking place over four days. So it starts on Friday the 29th. Um, and we've got um, David Badil with his book, Jews Don't Count. And he is being interviewed by David Aranovich on Saturday, Saturday afternoon in the Assembly Hall Theatre, we have Kate Humble and she'll be talking about home cooking and um, she will be interviewed by uh, probably Felicity uh, Cloak from The Guardian, but that's not confirmed. Um, and then Saturday evening, we have the wonderful Joe Brand, of course, an old girl from Tunbridge Wells. So nice to have that local connection. She'll be interviewed by somebody. And then on Saturday, Oh, Sunday, we've got the Royal Tunbridge Wells uh, Symphony Orchestra in the Assembly Hall Theatre. Um, but Monday, we've got Pat Nevin, who for sports fans will know he's the old, um, uh, uh, he played for Scotland, 28 Cats for Scotland, and he's being interviewed by Andy Hamble Hamilton. And then we've got a wide variety of children's work, children's literature. Um, we're covering genres of crime, of uh, well-being, of uh, it, it's a really amazing uh, program of events um, across these four places. And something that would be amazing is if you as businesses would be able to help us promote it on the website, on your websites, if you would take leaflets for us in your shops, all of them credit um, Tunbridge Wells Together uh, support. Um, so that there is a, a natural connection between the businesses and and the and the festival, um, and I think there are thirty events taking place across that weekend. And as I say, that will become something for the future that we will do every year. Um, I'm not going to lie; we have put together this together very short notice. Um, and so next year we will have a lot, well, we'll start as soon as this festival is over, we'll start to do the rest. Um, so that would be amazing. And then I think the last thing that I wanted to mention really before taking some questions
questions from everybody, um, is that we have organised um, a day again in conjunction with Hillary um, from the council and with Sarah Jane from um, BID to uh, have 25 prominent uh, travel writers and tourism operators come to the town um, and we're going to give them a rather grand day out. Uh, so they will have a tour of the Amelia, they will have a backstage tour of the Assembly Hall Theatre, they'll have talks from uh, the great and the good that um, talk about Tunbridge Wells and then they're going to go down for lunch at Tunbridge Wells Hotel uh, courtesy of Julian. Um, they're having a blue badge tour around Tunbridge and then they are having um, a drinks reception. Um, jo, what are they doing at Geography? They're doing that Geography are very kindly having them down for um, some gin tasting, talk about local suppliers and wines and things like that and Geography themselves. Isn't that right? <laughs> so I at. think I think, you know, we'll get them drunk at the end of the day so that they'll go away having had the most amazing day. And uh, sorry, I just got an email then that flush across. Um, and uh, hopefully then they will continue to write great things about how wonderful Tunbridge Wells is. To me, it feels as though, you know, we're all post just coming out of COVID. Um, the struggles that you've had, the struggles that we've had, we share those struggles. We, it's been a, a, the most extraordinary time. And of course, now there is something else that's very big that's going on that is affecting us. But we have to just continue together, don't we? We have to work together and um, celebrate. Um, really, Sarah Jane's been amazing in bringing together our culture and our businesses, which has never really connected totally before. Um, so th this is a really good collaboration. Um, so there's my romp through. So please, I am very How happy. Can I weigh in for two seconds? Of course you can. <laughs> um, it was just that Sarah Jane and I were also talking and um, Carol and Sarah Louise are putting together a USB stick for the journalists that are coming down as part of their goodie bags so we're producing goodie bags for them but Sarah Jane will be producing it will I'll liaise with her about sending over some stuff to put on that for all the journalists about all the local businesses and, and Tom and Wells together and things as well so you'll all be within that um oh and also um also Carol um Sarah Louise uh Sarah Jane and I sorry we're discussing I think you guys probably have had it by now but um we've We've decided that we're going to offer um, 24 adverts in the Literary Festival um, brochure and we haven't offered it to anyone yet. So you lot are the first ones. So just to let you know, if you do are interested in that, contact me or Carol. First come, first served. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Carol. That was so informative. I'm impressed there was a whole slideshow um, prepared as well. I wasn't expecting that. So that's really, really lovely. Um, and it's just so nice to see it, you know, all come together. And I think it's been such an amazing addition to the town. You know, Nikki and I are very lucky. We had a tour way back in kind of July last year and, and we were just blown away by how big the space was. So really excited to see it fill up and, and in use. So um, are you happy to answer any questions that anyone may have um i can't see everyone on my screen but if you could um i mean either just jump in if you have a question or i can see nikki's put her hand up we'll start with nikki hi there that no that's brilliant really really excited about um the amelia um i know as sarah jane said we were lucky enough to see it um when it was being built and obviously but obviously haven't seen it now but just seeing the pictures is there any more little tours we could any of us could have before or is that not a plan yes i think uh, i think there is a, a tour being organised by William um, and I think if we go through Sarah Jane so that we can see, I mean everybody will be invited at certain points mm. but if there's a need, I mean particularly for you Nikki as you're right opposite mm. um, then um, you know let, well, let's see what, what we can organise. I mean the thing is that literally every time you take anybody around we're in the way of builders but no, so no. small tours. Yeah I great. think I think probably what would probably be um, particularly helpful is probably for the Monson Road traders as well. Um, yeah that's sort I, mean, of I think um, that is being I'm yeah sorry sorry to put in I think it's Hillary I, I think it is being organised for the Monson oh. Road traders in particular in the next 
little while. So yeah, I think we'll, we're going to be in touch with um, with them. So that's yeah, I don't know if there's anybody here from Monson Road today, but um, that yeah, is, it will uh, be that is a being planned. Key, yeah, <laughs> a key. So Jane and I also mentioned possibly doing one of the, the one of the next couple of these meetings in the media, so you guys can have a look as well because we could go oh, and have a amazing and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get my phone and do a live tour as we. <laughs> As well as Carol said, you know, we, we've we only just had, because um, the contractors have been in, we've only just been given the site back. So I only went in on Friday for the first time. So some of you have seen it before me. Um, so well, now actually, we're just might beginning be... to be able to get in and show people around, which is really exciting. What might be really nice is perhaps, I don't know if this would work for you, Sarah Jane, but maybe maybe our next one, we could, could we hope, could it be hosted there? We could have it sort of alive or, or certainly in a couple of, you know, a couple of months or something when you are properly open, perhaps. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and Joe and I discussed that actually about having, you know, potentially big, um, you know, get togethers there as well, because it's such a great space and mm. it must be keen to, to get in there and have a look around. So definitely amazing. Other questions? Thank you, Nikki. Do we have any other questions for the for the team? Um, just to flag up, obviously, you know, Real Times Rise Together um, are financially supporting the Literary Festival. So on this end as well, we will be trying to come up with some ideas for how we can include um, businesses on our side, any comms we can do, if we can do like a maybe a little literary trail or something to complement the festival. Um, so if anyone does have any ideas about how your business would like to get involved, um, please either do approach me or Carol. And um, I'm sure there are lots of connections we can make there to do our own little side side activities and events. Um, does anyone else have any questions about the Amelia or about the Literary Festival? Can't see anyone's hands raised. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it. Um, oh, I have Claudia. Claudia's got her hand up. Oh, Claudia. Yeah. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Claudia. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm, well, first of all, I'm, it's really exciting. Um, and thank you so much for coming uh, inside the, the project. Uh, obviously, I've, I've been looking outside and um, I'm sort of admiring, but to actually see what it's going to look inside is just um, really amazing. Um, I just wanted to quickly ask, when is the official opening day? 28th of April. 28th of April, okay. And that's open to the public full, yeah, okay. And so obviously Carol, you've got the, um, the sort of little press launch beforehand on the actual day itself is there anything happening on kind of opening days or any kind of hurrah around the opening or well i mean the what i think what we're going to do is the uh amelia amelia scott's descendants are going to sort of cut the ribbon Fantastic. Um, yeah and yeah. so that's really good we wanted to make sure that it had very much a local feel to it um for that opening i think later in the year our ambition is to actually try to get a royal visit um established so that we can bring the national spotlight onto the area um, but that wasn't possible for the opening so i think we've still got ambitions to have a spotlight on the town um in a national and international capacity later but that's the uh, official and then there will be a reception um, on the Friday for the for the literary festival as well. Um, so effectively, there's a, there's um, uh, all the local councillors and and local people on the Monday, the twenty second, when adult ed go in. Then on there's a media day, separate media day, and then there is the Amelia Scott um, family opening. A series of soft launches. <laughs> a series of well, largely because you can't fit too many people in. I think you know, um, although it is a very large space it, at any one time, I think the largest space we've got is probably around at the atriums, which is it, it, it's only about seventy people, seventy to one hundred people. Lovely. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, any you. other questions for the Amelia? No, well, thank you so much for joining us. I have recorded this, um, your lovely presentation, so I will share it um, with our broader group. I know lots of people were keen to hear about it, but couldn't attend today, so I will make that available for them to to watch. So thank you so much. And if anyone does have any other um, questions about the media, please feel free to get in touch with um, Jo. I'll share her contact details um, later on, you know, or Carol, Sarah Louise, um, or myself. Please just let us know. Um, that's great. Thank you so much. Right, so thank now you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I've just to meet you all.
Um, so just to, I've just realised, Joe, you've got a fake background of the Amelia. I've only just noticed that. <laughs> so it shows how observant I am. I morning. thought I'd go on brand today. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I just rattle through some quick bid updates and then we do have um, another guest speaker who will invite to join us at the end um, of the call. We've got Lizzie um, Bentley Bowers with us um, from Oakley School, who's going to be talking a little bit about kind of um, inviting people with additional needs into your workplace. So hopefully she'll be able to give us a little bit more information on that at the end. And as I say, I will stay on the end of the call as well if anyone's got any specific questions for me. Um, but just on the bid side, so we are now very much planning ahead um, for this year. I've now finalised our budget um, and really looking at what we're going to be carrying on throughout this year. Now, lots of big big projects planned um, and actually you will see from the bid this year quite um, a focus on street scene improvements so we really want to be doing very visible projects in the town centre that you you know will see and that will hopefully make a, a difference to your trading environment um, and that you know will really stand alone as kind of bid projects that have been funded and supported by businesses themselves. Um, so, you know, hopefully lots of street scene activity this year. Again, if you do have any ideas, any suggestions, um, please do get in touch. I am looking to form a working group um, on that topic specifically because we are looking to put sort of so much energy into those kind of projects this year. So if you do have a particular interest in, you know, things you would like to see around the town centre, whether it's installations or, you know, planters or, you know, benches, whatever it is you feel the town centre needs if you'd like to join that working group um you know we'll we'll be meeting up quite regularly to to really inform that work so please let me know um on that but that's what you can expect to see from us moving forward um more currently the spring magazine is sort of imminently going to print so that will be out soon um i have to say i'm Pretty pleased with this one. I think it looks really nice. Claudia's smiling away there. She's one of the uh, many businesses featuring in it. Some lovely pictures of her. Um, so that will be widely available as well. So much like the maps, if you would like stock of the magazine to hand out, and we'll have some lovely holders and things like that, and we'll be doing some promotional activity around stockists. And um, obviously, kind of last year we weren't able to do that. It was things were a little bit difficult still with with Omicron. Um, but now the ambition is to get it much wider out there and, and for you to stock it. Um, Another, I think, exciting bit of news I'm sure lots of businesses will be um, keen to hear about. We are planning a spring film as well. Um, so this will be kind of the sequel to the Christmas film, a nice sort of elegant tourist film. Um, to to promote the town centre and, and what you can do um, here in spring so um i'll put more details of that in our group chat and kind of in our um newsletter updates as to when we have a, a filming slot available but i'm sure lots of you want to do some of your acting again um, much like you did at christmas so i think jeff's smiling away there um so um yeah hopefully that that will be in the um in the works imminently um so a couple of big events i'm looking to bring to the town centre this year I spoke about this briefly last last month, but um, the Royal Tunbridge Wells cake off. Um, so for the the uh, Royal Jubilee this year, um, I will be bringing the Royal Tunbridge Wells cake off. Um, we have decided to extend it, so it will take place on one day in the Pantiles and one day at the top of town. So we really want to create a rivalry between those kind of top and bottom businesses um, and see who can produce the best cake, whether that's sort of Tunbridge Wells themed or Jubilee themed um, for the Jubilee. And we will have kind of a, a day of you know prize giving and giving out samples of your cake to the public. And we'll be doing um, you know lots of promotion around that. Um, haven't put, haven't booked Paul Hollywood yet, but you know, never, you never know if anyone knows him, that would be great. Or Mary Berry to come along and cut the ribbon on that one. Um, another big event I'm looking to bring to Town Centre is something new, and I'm hoping will complement the Literary Festival actually and time with some of the work of the Amelia. Um, is an art week, so I'm looking to bring that uh, to Town Centre in August at some point, probably late August, and that would be a week of activities, you know, whether that's free painting classes out in the pantiles, um, photography classes, we'll be commissioning kind of colouring books and, and postcards to give away um, and, you know, fashion shows and things like that. So um, very much still in kind of early conceptual phases. But again, I would like to form a committee, um, you know, to inform that. So I'll be asking, you know, fashionable businesses and creatives, galleries, Claudia, very much yourself, um, to join me on a committee for that, as I'm sure you all know a lot more about art than I do. So um, it'd be great to hear your thoughts on what kind of activities you would like to see, um, you know, whether that's within your businesses or out on the streets. I'll also have a, a pot of funding available. So if you would like to run an art related activity, um, you know, you can make a bid to me to have, have some money to um, put that on our programme of 
park activities. Um, so yeah, a big couple of events this year. Um, you know, sort of pre-Christmas and again Christmas, um, you know, we'll be looking to work with you on small committees to have your own kind of events around the town centre in relation to the Christmas lights. Um, obviously, I have more information on that because it just feels too soon to be talking about it. It's still March, um, but just to put it on your radar that if you do have ideas for what you'd like to do in your street for Christmas, then, you know, it's never too early to start talking about it. Um, so just some more imminent things. Um, I have some training spaces available. So next Wednesday, I believe it is next Wednesday, March the 23rd, um, we have the shop front training. Um, which is at four o'clock. Uh, I think it's for an hour um, and it's from with a gentleman called Graham, who is a member of the um, High Street Task Force. So he's very, very experienced in going around lots of town centres and, and seeing what they need. And that'll be focusing on how you can make the front, you basically your shop front, you know, very aesthetically pleasing, how you can draw businesses in. Um, and if you can't make it at that time, um, I will be recording it. So it'll be available to watch back afterwards. But if you would like to join, you know, I have sort of unlimited spaces. So for you and your staff, just let me know. Um, I'd be very happy to add you on to that. I also still have um, training spaces available for the anti-drink spiking um, campaign that we're doing and also have stop top foils available as well. So if you're a hospitality venue, you know, whether that's a bar, a club, hotel, whichever it may be, if you serve alcohol and you would either like some stop tops or you'd like to be um, added onto the anti-drink spiking training, then please do let me know. Um, and also just before I hand over to Lizzie, who I'm hoping is still with us here, yeah, um, just to let you know about the next meeting. So our next meeting will be on April the 20th. I do have a couple of guest speakers lined up for that one as well. So we have the new owners of the um, Eli Food uh, Eli Court Food Court, um, who have now taken over that area, and you know, uh, no, of... they haven't, Sarah Jane, oh, yet. Okay. <laughs> Not taken over yet, but oh, that will okay. be announced soon. Well, they, they, they'll be with us in April anyway, so I might have jumped the gun a little bit there. Um, and we'll also have uh, Jess of the TN card as well. We'll be updating us um, on kind of the launch of her app and, and what she's doing around Tunbridge Wales um, and Tunbridge. Um, so, Lizzie. Welcome, thank you for joining us. I'm going to pass over to you now just to give us a little bit of an update on, on what you wanted to speak to town centre businesses about today. Thank you, Sarah Jane, and thank you all for having me. I will, um, I'll be, I'll be brief and passionate, hopefully, because I want to talk to you about um, some very wonderful young people who um, live in our town. Um, so I'm a governor of Oakley School. Um, we're a school that have young people from age three through to age 19 with Profound, profound, severe and complex needs. Um, and in our 14 to 19 year old phase, which is actually based on our Tunbridge site, we have two sites, we have a Tunbridge Wells site and a Tunbridge site. Um, we have a real focus on work towards independence and leading a fulfilling life. So our vision is independence, confidence, resilience, leading a happy, positive and meaning of, meaningful future. And what we all know is that a key part of a meaningful future for any of us is to be able to work. Um, and so many of our young people want to be contributing to society. They want to socialize. They want to use the skills they've worked hard to build. They want to build on those skills. Um, and unfortunately, the opportunities to do that aren't as available as we would love them to be. I don't have the most recent statistics to throw at you, not least because I think we haven't been gathering them from through COVID, but um, statistics from MENCAP in, and the NHS in 2018 tell us that 6% of adults with a learning disability known to their local authority in England are in paid work, only 6%. Um, and that's not for not wanting to. Um, but we really understand at Oakley that whilst we're working really hard to prepare our young people for the world of work, it can be perhaps a bit daunting to think about offering them an opportunity. Um, you might not know much about how to do that, how to go about it, how to support them. So what we'd really love to be doing is having more conversation and more conversation with local business and creating more opportunity for our wonderful young people. They will explain this and share what they can offer so much better than I ever could. And that's that's the main thing we would love to do is find a way to invite you to an event. So we ran an event two weeks ago in Tunbridge in which we had local job coaches um, and local businesses and representatives from our Oakley community all coming together um, and realising just how much is possible when we work together for these young people. Um, to give you the list of wishes for us, it ranges from 
the conversation that we're having now and having more of that conversation to work experience, to jobs, to opportunities to use particular equipment or to hire or borrow equipment, um, talking about spaces in which young people can either have experiences with you or in which we can create spaces within the school area for them to practice skills. There's tons and tons of things that we would love to be in dialogue with local businesses about. Um, and Sarah Jane has very kindly given me this opportunity to talk to you. And I'm wondering what the best way is, Sarah Jane, for me to continue the conversation. I can share email addresses in the chat. And that way, if anyone's interested in continuing to talk, help us have the conversation, then you're very welcome to get in touch. Would that be the best thing to do? You're muted, Sarah Jane. Sorry, <laughs> I will share your details in our group chat and um, with the okay. members of this meeting after and then if anyone else wants to have any extra information, they can get in touch with you um, and uh, sort of carry on the dialogue that way and hopefully we can continue on as well in any potential collaboration. That would be great. Thank you. And thanks for having me. As I say, the young people are the ones that you really want to hear from and it would be lovely to get you in to do that. Thank lovely. you. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just going to do a quick, quick round now, just kick on a couple of people I think might be um, interesting for a little update. Um, Jeff, I'm just going to pick on you. Um, would you mind giving us an update on where you are? Because obviously since last time we saw you, um, you've, you've had some activity, should we say? <laughs> Yes, if you can hear me. Um, yes, so uh, hi, I'm uh, the plant-based restaurant. If you don't know. Um, yeah, so we were we were just sort of getting back to some kind of normality when the storm um, has collapsed a very large chimney onto us. Um, we actually, it's a, a, obviously it was a horrible thing, but we're actually in a very positive place now. Uh, not financially, obviously, um, but uh, we will be reopened by the end of the month. Um, it's actually happened very quickly. The, you know, in fairness to my landlord, has <laughs> sorted things out quickly, and um, we are, you know, waterproof, watertight now, and um, electrics are back on, and we are, we'll be back in. Um, we want to stay. We've we've organised a couple of events in the meantime. Uh, one of which has gone at the Guinea, but was really a uh, successful event. And um, we've got another one coming up at Vitalin Swig next week, next Tuesday. Um, yeah, as I said, we will be back before the end of the month. Um, we're about just about to announce that sort of publicly. Um, uh, yes, and, and our fundraiser has hit its target and has and slightly exceeded it now and is still ticking over. Um, and uh, I don't know if any of the people in this chat right now are the, are, it, it uh, applies to, but some of the local businesses, a lot of local businesses have been so generous to us with their time and space and donating to the raffle that we held at the guinea and, and things like that and it's been it's yeah it's been as as terrible as it was it's uh it's been lovely not only to to see that people actually do uh care i was going to be rude then let's say something rude um and but also um you know yeah, giving their time and their um you know effort to to helping us out has been oh Hello, Nikki, including Nikki Blanchard. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that obviously you're in RVP at the moment and have been for the last few, few weeks and, and for another yes. however long. Uh, so just of wanted course. to add you were there as well. <laughs> yes, of course. So Nikki is one of the very kind people who I've uh, alluded to, um, who has given us a space uh, at RVP to, um, to to carry on trading in in in, in a, a a smaller way than we did before, but but it, you know, to, to keep us talking to people and keep our name out there and keep us ticking over, and it's been fantastic. Thank you uh, for that, Nikki. Um, yes, uh, I think that's my lot. We're hoping to be reopen in time for Mother's Day, but I'm definitely not going to do any <laughs> Mother's Day stuff because, <laughs> or not any special you know menu or anything because we're just. 
um, yeah, we that's yeah, that's pretty much where we are. Oh, thank you so much, Jeff, for um for updating us. I know you know lots of us who felt awful when we saw what happened, and you know, well done for getting through it. And um, you know, thanks to everyone that's that's lent their support as well. So, yeah, please do let us know if there's anything else um, anyone can do. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, Nikki, I'm just going to go back to you. Any anything from RVP you can just share from? Um, yeah, actually, uh, I'm absolutely delighted to say that things are on the up. Um, the town, I mean, I'm, I'm sure William, uh, I don't know if William's still on the call, but um, we only caught up a couple of days ago and he was talking about all the amazing positivity in the town and lots of new shops opening. Um, and similarly, lots, of, lots and lots of stuff is happening in RVP as well. I mean, it's obviously been a very, very difficult period. Um, but we have got a number of deals in the pipeline at the moment. Um, one of the things that Sarah Jane alluded to earlier was that um, what was Central Market has now, we've now find it, found a new operator to take over the whole of Central Market. And um, although it's not signed and sealed at the moment, it's imminent. Um, so, you know, it would be great if we could everybody support that. Um, a lot of the third up to 13 independents of which four or five of them will remain that have been there um, but we're really hoping to reinvigorate that whole area which hopefully will also help Camden Road as well um, so we're really excited about that but actually a load of things in the pipeline um, the problem is it, it does take time for these things to go through legals take a huge amount of time um, so you just need to bear with us but you know I would honestly say that this is the most positive it's been for three years um, and I know we've had COVID in the middle, but, um, you know, we, we really are getting approached by an awful lot of people. And I think I think it's changed. It, you know, we're definitely in a stronger place. So hopefully that will help everybody. But I think I did mention last time that um, on this call, obviously, it would be nice if we had positivity from the town as well, because we have so much negativity. And it would be really nice if we got the support from the town as well, because we do need it as well. So um, so that that's me. Jeff, back to you. Hi, I don't know how to unraise my hand now. There we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I was just going to ask Nikki on on that um, on that matter. The the obviously it's not signed and sealed yet, but does that mean there are will be available units in the Eli Court or whatever it's called now, or will be called? Um, uh, uh or are they all because I know that a lot of them were part of the were owned by the mm. central market yeah uh, the new the new operator is going to be doing a similar system to before so there'll be a number of independent traders out there and there'll be a number that will be his as well um but if you want me to pass on your details Jeff I certainly can because I do believe they still have a few gaps um okay. so do let me know if you want to send a message to me separately and if anybody else uh, wants to because I I do think what's important as well is this we're going to try and do some churn to keep it fresh to keep it you know to keep it interesting and exciting um, so I am really really excited about that I think it will we really need food in the centre you know we're really lacking that um, and um, uh, and the, the this new team are really really proactive um, and yeah I'm excited to get them in so let me know separately Jeff if you're interested and I can put you in touch. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I'm not going to pick on anyone else. Oh, Donna's got a hand up. Donna? Sorry, just unmute me. Uh, <laughs> probably a cheeky question, Nikki. Um, this is really positive about Eli Court. Fantastic. Uh, but does that uh, come away from what you're doing on uh, where McDonald's used to be? Is that still going to be an eating forum or is that going to be changed or is that all top secret too? Uh, well, the, pro the problem we've had for a long time now is that whole zone, which includes Eli Court, the food court, and that whole area at the back of the centre has been in our development zone. Um, now, you may recall that when we were owned by Hermes, um, it was part of a project at the time to develop that whole area. And you may recall there was going to be a cinema at the top. Yeah. Um, we then were sold with that planning permission to British Land, who we belong to now. And the problem was is... At the time, the um, that development was wholly out of date because it had been designed like 10 years before. And the reality is, is if we'd have made that happen, 
we would never have filled it. So um, we've gone back to the table for that whole area and we're re-looking at new options for that whole area, which does encompass Eli Court, it encompasses the food court and that whole area. Um, so we have a number of options on the table at, at the moment, um, but our priority, to be frank at the moment, is filling the rest of the centre, because as you probably know, we had a refurb, which we finished during COVID, which was a disaster. Um, and, the, you know, we, we want to fill the, the rest of the centre up first, which looks absolutely beautiful. And then we'll be, you know, pushing heavily on that end of the centre. And that includes, you know, the, the end section, you know, around Camden Road and also Calverley, which I know looks absolutely hideous. I appreciate that. And we are seeing what we can do there. But I have to be honest, our priority at the moment is filling the rest of the centre up and then we can look at that. Well, congratulations on the BHS store because there's loads of stuff on Facebook about that, which is absolutely marvellous. Well, I might add that the only part of BHS is ours, um, but, you know, until something's signed, then don't, you know, that's the thing. Th things really shouldn't be out there until things are signed because things can fall through. And we've had that a number of times. So please bear that in mind. Low, you've got to look at the Times have got it all over Facebook. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's things I, I'm taking everything as a positive. <laughs> That's great. Well, I think, I think what's really exciting is just the fact that so many people are interested in property in Tunbridge Wells and it's definitely on and up. And I think with the Amelia and I mean, there's so much going on in the town. It, it really is exciting. It's it's exciting walking through the town and suddenly it's like, oh, God, that's happening. That's open. That's opening. I mean, it's fantastic. And I, I don't know if this is the same everywhere. But we've had a tough time, but now we're, it's it's turning. But yeah. as I mentioned last time, we've got to keep supportive of everybody. And I really do feel that, you know, um, there's been so much negativity towards us. And I really would appreciate if people could support us as well, because we do need it as well. Well, well done, you, Nikki. You're doing a fantastic job for me. <laughs> well, thank you, Donna. That's really appreciated. And I really hope it helps. I really, really do hope that Eli Court helps Camden Road. Because that was the idea of doing it originally to help the whole of all, you know, you, you know, the wonderful Camden Road, which we do appreciate also. Um, so fingers crossed it does. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Donna and Nikki. Um, does anyone else have anything they'd specifically like to say about their um, their business at the moment? Anything you'd like to update us on? I'm not going to do a round robin. I'm just very conscious there's lots of people here. Anyone specifically? No. OK, well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. I hope you found the um, Amelia briefing useful. I thought it was really informative, um, really excited to to see more of that. And, um, you know, if you do have any questions, please either come to me or, or the Amelia team. Um, and any questions about anything you've, you've seen today, please do let me know. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming. I'm going to stay on the call just in case anyone wants to have a chat with me afterwards about anything bid related or anything you'd like to, to hear anything more about. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for coming um, and I'll see you at the next one. In in April. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, I do have some people staying to speak to me. That's